My name is Claudia. I'm 25 years old. Well, I'm getting married in, yeah, about a month and a week. April 17th, and it's around the corner. And I just can't believe it. My name is Claire Kravchenko, and I'm a teacher and a wife and a mother. And I'm a whole bunch more than that, but it's a long story. <laughs> My name is Crystal Kramer and I am 35 years old. I have a daughter, she's three, and I have a husband, and I have company Crystal Casting. My name is Sylvia and I currently work as a model and I also do some acting. My name is Janelle, I'm 31 years old. I live and work in Toronto as a television producer. And I'm currently engaged to be married, uh, planning my wedding for December. Can you come in for the results? Diagnosed last year. I was diagnosed March 26th. I don't have any of the results. Diagnosis was Monday. Why did it happen to me? And then she just dropped the bomb. This is bullshit. Yeah, we don't always have breakfast in the morning today. With days, get up. Claudia recently graduated from college. She lives with her family and is engaged to be married next year. But a few months ago, she made a startling discovery, so one that would dramatically alter her yeah, life. I was just showering, and I felt something in my right breast, and I had a mini panic attack for just like a quick second, but then I said, don't worry. Being 24, she was initially refused a mammogram. The technician said, you know, I don't really want to give you this mammogram. And I was like, okay, well, I didn't just wake up and say, hey, I feel like a mammogram today, so obviously I'm here for a reason. Doctors, friends, and family assured her that she probably had nothing to worry about. Oh, my sister had this and it was nothing. My mom had this and she had it removed even though it was nothing. I was like, okay, it's probably nothing. Breast cancer at my age is not very common, so I didn't really think it was a possibility. It was like I remember the day that I went to get the results. I was wearing this beautiful yellow dress, and then she just dropped the bomb. And I'm like, so it's cancer? I'm like, like I have cancer? And she just kind of was like nodding. She's like, yeah. She's like, I'm so sorry. And just like, this is bullshit. <laughs> I didn't really expect it, so it was kind of crazy. <laughs> Sorry. So I may be late, so if you could just sort of run the show in case... As a we'll young working mom, Crystal's life was in full gear. She'd built a successful casting company and was the mother of a two-year-old toddler. Let's go, go, Crystal go, 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 knew she carried the cancer gene. My mom has had breast cancer twice, so I got her to get tested for the cancer gene, and she tested positive. Then they were able to test me. I've always thought I would get cancer. I always knew I would die pretty young. But she had always hoped that she would beat the odds. When I was first diagnosed, I was 33 years old. I was laying on my side, and if I dug in really deep, you could feel a little tiny hard knot. I kind of forgot about it because I was working and busy. And then suddenly, it just became very urgent. Oh my god, I have a lump. I have the cancer gene. I need to see somebody right away. They did the ultrasound, and I was able to see the black dot under my arm, and I went, holy fuck. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. Janelle speaking. Hey. A year ago, Janelle was on cloud nine. At 29, she'd finally landed her dream job as a television producer, and she and her boyfriend had just bought a home together. Life was going her way until she discovered a lump in her breast. Doctors had reassured me that, you know, it's probably just a cyst, but we'll get it, we'll get it checked out. So to have uh, come back with a diagnosis of breast cancer was like, kind of threw me for a loop. I made her go, I kept hounding and hounding. I was like, it's not going away, and I don't know what it is, so just check, just check for me. 
Just check for me so I know that it's nothing, but it turned out to be something. Didn't have a family history of breast cancer. I'd never even known anyone that had breast cancer and certainly didn't know that you could get breast cancer in your 20s. It was, it was, um, it was very surreal. After finishing university, Sylvia was living her dream. At 24, she was teaching in Korea and traveling all over the world. So when she found a small lump in her breast, she decided not to deal with it until she returned to Canada. But that was nine months later. The doctor called me and she said, we found something. And then at that point, I just kind of like shut down. When I was diagnosed, it was just like a screeching halt, like, eh, like, oh no, like, you know. This is messing everything up, and I, I just felt like, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't have time for it. We need to call the swans. Four years ago, at age 32, Claire and her husband were expecting their first child. When she discovered a lump in her breast, doctors assured her it was likely a blocked milk duct. But unfortunately, it turned out to be something much worse. I got a call, you have to come to the doctor's office right away. He just got the results back from the lab and it was, it was cancer. I think we just went into shock mode because it was just a, so, so wrong to be pregnant and yet to getting diagnosed with cancer at the same time. We had the obstetrician saying, okay, we need to leave baby in because baby still has six weeks. And we had the uh, oncologist saying, we need to operate. My gut instinct was I had to get this baby out of me. And my gut instinct was the baby would be fine. Diagnosis was Monday. Inducement for baby was Wednesday. Baby born Thursday. And uh, mastectomy eight days after that. From that moment on, we didn't stop. We just were in fight mode. Three weeks after the mastectomy, we were into six months of chemotherapy with a newborn, which is really hard. Claire still didn't feel like she was totally safe. She desperately wanted her second breast removed. They feel that it's an automatic reaction that you're scared and making maybe rash decisions and not really thinking through your decisions carefully. But again, my gut just said, get rid of this, you're a new mother. Your breast feels toxic. When Claire finally got her second mastectomy, they discovered a one millimeter invasive tumor, which meant her cancer had spread. After a few more months, I decided to get my own scan done of my body. So I actually went to Quebec to pay for my own scan. It's called a PET scan. It's a scan that looks for rapidly dividing cells in the body. Claire was emailed her results. I opened the email and it was two pages of, of listing of tumors throughout my body. I went in to see my oncologist with the report and he said, I'm, I'm sorry, Claire it's impossible, they, they must be tumors. And uh, the tumors were in my lymph nodes, liver, and lungs. I looked at him and I said, are you trying to tell me I'm going to die? And he said, I'm sorry. My husband and I just looked at each other and I think we were in shock because our doctor had just told us that I was gonna die. I was 34. Until I felt that lump, had never really considered it as, as a possibility, let alone had considered it as the thing that was going to kill me in my 30s. After receiving the devastating news of her terminal diagnosis, Claire and her family decided to see the world. Our first love has always been traveling. So we liquidated any cash we could get and traveled the world for a year, on and off between appointments. Two months on Wednesday? Wednesday, it's exactly Two months two on months. Wednesday, and we'll be wed. And then we'll be married. Yes. Although Claudia has been recently diagnosed with breast cancer, she and her fiancé, David, have decided not to postpone their wedding. Okay. I don't have time for breast cancer, but I have time for this. <laughs> This mutual friend um, ended up introducing us after we had graduated, so we were both in university. Both and, in uh, relationships. Yeah, <laughs> those obviously didn't work out. Yeah. And, uh, and I guess fast forward three and a half years later, that's going to see where we are. Yeah. We've been together for four years. We got engaged in December, and we had already booked the hall and the church. I can't just let this 
stop plans that we had. I feel like I've been waiting forever already to be with him. I can plan this wedding and I'm gonna do it. But unlike most young couples planning their future, Claudia and David have had to fast track their decisions about any children they may want. We did one cycle of fertility drugs. We ended up getting six embryos and now we have that as backup. Because your estrogen receptor and your breast cancer was positive, did she tell you what she plans after? Um, just the tamoxifen, because I have to do three years of tamoxifen, and that'll put me into like a menopausal state, so I won't have periods, and obviously I can't have children during that time. When it comes down to it and you look at him and you're like, oh my God, I might not be able to give you children, you want to do whatever you can do to give him and yourself like a baby that you both made. Crystal's cancer was so aggressive, doctors performed a double mastectomy, and soon after, she began treatment. They took out 31 lymph nodes, 28 were positive. I spent so much of my life hating my breasts, and now I have nothing left to hate. With her treatments finally finished, Crystal is anxious to move on with her life. To recover more the prosthesis. I have prosthesis. It's a very hypoallergenic silicone, and it has a natural shape. We're going to a sexy one. You can make out with this, and you can mm -hmm. sort of feasibly think that these were still real boobs. When we're pushing the envelope even more, like maybe like the purple one, or I think this white one here. This is pretty. I like this. No. no. How do you feel sexy with no boobs at night? This one is. No. You didn't like it. <laughs> it's just comical. I have a headache. Not ready to deal with her diagnosis, Sylvia booked a flight back to Korea to see her boyfriend. The day before she was supposed to fly out, she went to see her surgeon. She said, we took out four lymph nodes, no, and the cancer had spread to two of them. I called my boyfriend at the time, and he's like, there's no way you're coming here. You're going to go get this surgery. Okay, okay. Before Sylvia was diagnosed, she was very active. I was an avid traveler. I was working really, really, really hard. I was always busy. It was just like a screeching halt. Oh no, this is messing everything up. Feeling that she was too young for her diagnosis, Sylvia was devastated to learn that she had stage two breast cancer and it had spread to her lymph nodes. She has little time to make a decision. What should I do if I get a mastectomy? You know, how many wear a bikini and like, I'm gonna wear a low cut top. You know, nobody wants a one breasted model. Or does my boyfriend really want a one breasted girlfriend? When are they coming to get you? Right now. On April 23rd, 2009, Sylvia had a mastectomy to remove her left breast. She was 25 years old. Although Sylvia's physical recovery was fast, the emotional scars linger. Later. After the mastectomy, in terms of body image, I was fine. I looked down, oh, it's not too bad. It's just something you get used to really quickly. I think as time continues, it becomes more difficult chopping off my hair, going bald, having a mastectomy, losing my breast, like that wasn't hard, like dealing with it right away. I think the hardest part is you begin to remember what you used to be like. How do you really bring up a topic like, oh, I had breast cancer? To go on a date and be like, for somebody not to know what you've been through and what you are going through, that's a lot to bring to the table. After Janelle's diagnosis, her doctors recommended that she has a lumpectomy. Now with the treatment behind her, she looks forward to the future. About a month after my last chemo treatment, I was bald from head to toe, and uh, my fiance proposed to me. So it gave me kind of something positive to focus my energy on. The morning after I got engaged was the first time I woke up in months and didn't think, oh, I have cancer. My first thought that morning was I'm getting married. So it's kind of a fresh start for me. This one feels like it's almost like a vintage dress. Exactly. Like, yeah. like For Kareem, I think it was hard because he's a problem solver. 
So he wanted to figure out what to do to make me feel better. There is a million scams. What do I do? What do I say? What do you want me to do? And the answer to all of that is, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And uh, guys are generally like fixers, problem solvers. So I don't know sucks. I asked him, did you ever cry about me having breast cancer? And he's like, yeah, I would cry in the shower. I would cry, you know, I just didn't want to cry in front of you because I didn't want you to think that you weren't going to be okay or that something was going to happen to you. It was great because he was always so positive. He's like, you're going to be okay. Like, he never seemed to question it. So it was good to be around that. Sylvia is almost halfway through her chemo treatment, and she's been told she will not have to undergo radiation. With this good news, she's anxious to meet with her surgeon. She's hopeful she can begin reconstructive surgery sooner than expected. It's kind of the day that you're waiting for at the end. I'm more than halfway done, so I'm pretty excited. Want to get reconstructed, hey? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think it's a good idea. OK. She's a very good candidate. I think body image is very important. I really want to get this started. <laughs> I'm tired of walking around with one boob. <laughs> After cashing in the family savings to travel the world for a year, Claire defies the odds. Although her tumors continue to grow, she's determined to move on with her life. This last bit of news is a bit devastating for us. I'll be on chemo for the rest of my life, and um, as long as I choose to. But that's, as far as medically speaking, that's our, our last go, go at this. We don't have much more time. The decisions I'll be making are time versus quality. Do I really want to take a drug that makes me feel really, really bad? I, I don't know. I don't know. But then I look at Nathan, and I think, well, shouldn't I do everything I can to live longer? We lived with cancer in our life. We're not dying with it, we're living with it. Today, Claire is meeting with an art therapist at the Doan House Hospice to discuss how she can prepare Nathan for her passing. Brown, who's, whose car is that? My yacht. It's my car? My car isn't brown. You're interested in bringing Nathan into the art therapy program? Okay. Yes, even though he's young. We want him to be ready for changes. Nathan's whole childhood has been with you with cancer? We go to hospitals a lot, okay. but he, that's just his norm. So you said the word cancer in front of him? Yes. OK. But I don't know if that has registered. He's probably able to know something's up. He might not know what. Yeah. Um, you'll probably know from his art when he explains it to you right. what he's feeling. You and Adam will know what's going So stuff going does on. come out through the art. Yeah, I've, <sighs> yeah. With everything that Claire is facing, she and Adam have decided to renew their vows at the family cottage. It's important to take a step back and remember why we got married in the first place. What we admire in each other and what we mean to each other. And it was particularly special because we are facing these trials where it's not going to be a long, long life together. I was more present and, and listening to what Adam said and what I had to say and not caring about anything around us. It was almost more real than the first wedding and more special. Now you can kiss on the beach. Yeah! <laughs> Ooh, hold that. Yeah! <laughs> Final blessing. Oh, I like it. I found it. <laughs> you can't help but feel more full of life after you've been with her. You, you can't help it. It's this contagion from her. <laughs> How will Nathan deal with this? How will I help him to deal with this? He's only three years old, and so sitting down and trying to explain to him that his mom's going to die it would just be confusing for him. I know after Claire dies, I'll be sad for a long time, but I'll be happy again. And so take those incredible things about that person and take them into your heart and keep them with you all the time. This is it now. From my perspective, this is heaven on earth. 
Three months after having a lumpectomy, Claudia is starting chemotherapy. Unfortunately for her and her family, this brings up painful memories. My mom died of cancer five years ago. I was worried more about my dad because I hadn't told him anything. He's gonna worry and he's gonna panic for no reason. And, and I'm so much like my mom and I look exactly like her. And so it's just, it's like weird for everybody, you know? She had lymphoma. They say it's completely unrelated, which I don't know. It's cancer, it's cancer, I guess. Between treatments and all of her other appointments, things are starting to take a toll on Claudia. Being strong and positive all the time and telling people that everything's fine and it's not as bad as you thought and that you're doing great and considering the circumstances, things are fine. Time's running out for the wedding. I feel like I have a lot of planning that I still need to do and I know that it'll get done. I'm just kind of getting fed up with feeling like shit all the time. With life returning to normal, Crystal and her family took a much needed trip to Hawaii. But unfortunately, Crystal's health has deteriorated. Cancer's returned, it's in my spine, it's all up and down. There's like eight vertebrae at least or something involved. And it also ended up in my cerebellum. So they immediately started me on like emergency chemo. They radiated my brain. In about two months again, they'll scan me again. They'll probably scan my spine, scan my brain, to see A, is the cancer spreading? Is it remaining the same? Is it shrinking? A few months before her wedding, Claudia won't allow the side effects of chemotherapy to slow her down. I felt basically flu-like, kind of as if someone beat the crap out of me. Then I had some mouth issues. I got the dry mouth everyone talks about, which I kind of think is a side effect of chemo that People outside of the cancer world don't really talk about it. Everyone talks about, oh, your hair falls out. But your hair falling out doesn't hurt. Your mouth, that shit hurts. Claudia meets with her aunt, who is redesigning her mother's wedding dress. Yeah, well, yeah. So I'm making it with no straps. Because this is all bare, right? These are no. just... She and I are going to sit down and basically look at my mom's dress, which is what I'm going to be wearing on my wedding day. Don't I look so oh, badass? Oh, yeah. I'm like a badass bride. <laughs> They said it's gonna fall out any day, so I just did it for fun yesterday. Although it's a joyful time for Claudia and her family, it's also an emotional one. I love you too. Ah, I'm crying. Under okay, hands. okay. No, you don't have to cry. I'm okay. I'm okay. Those are my boobs. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sylvia's excited about celebrating her 26th yeah. birthday. But a night on the town requires some extra preparation for a young woman dealing with breast cancer. Oh wow, I have hair now. You like this one better? I think some of my friends are just now finding out that I had a mastectomy. <laughs> I'm glad I can change my hair with my dress. <laughs> this year, my birthday is kind of like a milestone because I've been through so much. It's actually a few days before my last chemo, so it almost feels like I can move on to another chapter of my life. Things are gonna get better and more exciting for me. With the possibility of Janelle's cancer recurring, she must be tested every six months for the next five years. My first mammogram has a screening technique to just make sure that there's nothing going on, there's nothing suspicious in my breast. But breast cancer isn't one of those cancers where you reach the five-year benchmark and then you're cancer-free. There's always a possibility that it'll come back. My future, hopefully, is cancer-free. There have been more complications since Crystal was diagnosed metastatic. Doctors have discovered a cyst on her ovaries. Crystal is a high risk for ovarian cancer because of the breast cancer gene she carries. So the wind ovarian cancer, in my case, can be the most serious and it can sometimes develop within months and can kill within months. So I just think it's of the utmost urgency to have it done sooner and they feel the same way. I thought, for sure, by the time I'm 39, if I don't have another kid, I'll have my ovaries out. Mm -hmm. So at least this way, it's forcing me to make the decision now. It's a no-brainer decision. I have to do it. You can't have any dreams anymore. If you think your life isn't as long, it's like, okay, well, what do you do with these days now based on that information? Do you work really hard towards goals that you don't necessarily, like, you can't achieve so much anymore? 
Yeah. We didn't have to do this all last year. So you had it before? Yes. Sorry, little poke. It's oh, it's not that bad. This road is just, it's a long, crazy road. And I just sort of said, today, when does it end? Although her health continues to decline, Claire is determined to fulfill a lifelong dream. Pretty excited. I just a little nervous. I think once I get there, and my nerves will calm down. I have people coming that I haven't seen in 10 years. Claire's hometown nominated her to carry the Olympic torch because she's touched so many lives. I had a goal to carry the torch. I honestly didn't think I'd make it to Christmas. She became an instant local celebrity. It was one of the best days of my life. Ladies and gentlemen, the Olympic play! So you brought me cookies? Yeah. That's so Kinder. sweet. For Sylvia, today is an exciting day, as one chapter in her journey is ending. No. <laughs> was it your birthday a few days ago? Yeah. Happy birthday. Mm -hmm. It's my last chemo. It'll be my last feeling nauseous and feeling tired. This was given to you. I love chemo. It's the best. Joking. Although it's it's rough after chemo, I know that I can get through it because it's my last one. I would not wish this on my worst enemy. Looking back, as I am at my last chemo, I'm like, oh, it's gone by really fast. But going through it, really slow. Really a lot of emotions and physical changes and mental changes. Um, it's been quite the journey. I know it's hard to escape it. Like, every day I live with the knowledge that I had breast cancer. And, you know, like, how can you not? Like, how can you not think about it? All right, we're all done. Yay. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. I'm done. Very I'm done. Woo! Oh, my ears. <laughs> Perfect. How did you manage with your first couple of treatments? No problem when it was going in. Okay, As Claudia endures another session of chemotherapy, it starts to visibly wear her down. An hour and a little bit, and then the other one's 45 minutes. Okay. Yeah. The ice is for um, blocking blood flow to my fingernails so that the drug doesn't affect them. It can make them brittle, and in the worst case, they can fall off. So. I endure the ice for an hour. The good thing is I'll be good over Christmas, and I'll have New Year's that I can feel good. <laughs> Nathan, are you decorating the tree? Oh, wow. It's beautiful. Give me Merry Christmas gifts. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. is behind us. Thank God it's over. And uh, this year we're going to be uh, getting married, so mm -hmm. that's Smoke exciting. <laughs> and I guess we've already tested our sickness and health vows, so um, I think uh, I think we should be okay. What do you yeah. think? We should be okay. As long as the wedding stays <laughs> under budget, we'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. It's a new year, and I'm looking forward to just feeling better, planning the wedding, getting married, going on a honeymoon, and moving into my place and starting a healthy life with Dave. Claudia is putting the final touches together for her wedding. I still have a few things that I need to get done. I'm hoping everything is going uh, smoothly. Yeah, it's just, you know, we're kind of running short on time and I've got a lot going on with just finishing up my treatments. I don't have the time to kind of sit down and put the thought into it. I want it to be a little bit artistic. I want it to be classy. I don't want it too overdone. I love it. This is like super cool.
Crystal's last surgery to remove her ovaries went well. She's anxious to get home for Lena's fourth birthday. I've decided to make an hour tape for every birthday that she has from now until she's 86. And I'll just tape myself and I'll, I'll bring a birthday cake and, you know, I'll have dinner with her. So just so she can get to know me. It was kind of like her birthday slash Crystal gets out of the hospital celebration. She's the highlight. She's the best part of the day. Crystal was told she does not have ovarian cancer. But the tumors from her breast cancer have become unbearable. She now wears a pain pump. It's just attached to me. It pulls right into there. It just automatically gives me pain medication. And then if I want extra pain medication, I can just press the button and I can have more. The chemo is basically to help my symptoms go away. It's not necessarily to make my cancer go away entirely because there is no cure, but just to make my symptoms better so that I can function better. But we have to start talking about death and what is that and kind of start facing all those things. Things are looking up for Sylvia as she trains for a new job with Rethink, a breast cancer support group for young women. A year ago, Sylvia had no idea she'd be working there. Seems like such a good fit. I can take my experience with breast cancer and bring it to this job. You know, sometimes we dwell on very hard times and we dwell on the things that get us really down, but sometimes we've got to take a moment out of life and say, you know what, there are some really great moments out there and there's some reasons to smile about, and that's why we're here. Sylvia is also preparing for her first phase of reconstructive surgery. When I finish training on Friday, I fly out Saturday, and then I have surgery on Wednesday. So it's, things are like, I don't know, time is like flying by. It's going by so fast. Being at the cottage brings back some memories for me. I came up here the Thanksgiving before I was uh, officially diagnosed with breast cancer but I definitely knew that something was wrong. I'd had my core biopsy, and uh, I was waiting for my test results. For Janelle's parents, her diagnosis was difficult to come to terms with. I never expected Janelle at her age to be uh, diagnosed with, uh, with breast cancer. Or, I mean, it, any cancer is devastating, no matter how old you are, but uh, certainly for, for Barb and I, it was just not on the radar at all. There must be a mistake, you know, she's only 29, and uh, women who are in their 60s get breast cancer, and that's, that's it. We talked about it, we cried about it. It's okay. And we knew that, that we'd all get through it, and it was going to be okay. Well, obviously it was uh, devastating. It should have been me, not her. I did get some bad news that the cancer has spread to my eyes. So I have a tumor on my retina now. They have to monitor it to see if it's growing or not because it's the first time they saw it. And if it's growing, they'll have to do radiation on my eyes. The hope is that if it is growing, we can stop it or slow it down. It's kind of mind boggling for everyone around us because if you look at me, you don't think I'm as sick as I am, but really I'm full of cancer. Most people can't tell right now. So I'm just uh, praying for more days like this. Every day I just want another day where I feel okay. There's days when I'm just crumbling, but you know, I, I tend not to crumble in front of a lot of people. I tend to crumble in front of Adam, and that's probably where he, you know, he takes on a lot more stress than the average person. I know my time is limited, and I always think to myself when I start to fall really hard that a day of depression is a day lost. And what a shame that would be. Today is April 17th, the big day of the wedding. And we're just here getting hair and makeup done. It's just happening. And I'm like freaking out of it. Do you have a nice shave? Oh, yeah. Ooh, smooth. Nervous? No. With only one more treatment of her septum to go, Claudia looks forward to happier times. Today's a good day because it's not just about me and Dave, it's about, you know, putting all that behind me and just starting new. T minus 15 minutes away. Claudia is everything at this point. She 
is stronger and more fantastic than I could have ever imagined, really. Today is the most important day of my life so far. It's the first day of the rest of my new life. She's beautiful because she's strong and so caring. Look on this side. There is no cure for Crystal's cancer. We're turning that corner in terms of, as a young couple, getting started and up and running, and finally things are on the right side, and the company's doing well, and, and it just feels like it's sort of a kick in the pants, and you can't, it just, it just sucks. I'd like to be able to get off this pain medication, and I'd like to be able to go back to feeling like a, just a regular person and not have to take all the medication and things. Crystal remains focused on one very important thing. I want to watch my daughter grow up. And now I'm focused on watching her get older, like how long can I be here? How many memories will she have of me? And can I see her be a teenager? You will be the leader. Can I? How long? How old will she be? You know, before I'm not here. With breast cancer behind them, Janelle and Kareem reflect on the impact it's had on their relationship. For me, like when I was diagnosed, I was going through treatments, I, I did have some guilt about everything I was putting him through. And I definitely had the thought, like if he was with someone else, he wouldn't be going through this. I guess he didn't see it the same way, but there's definitely that thought, like, oh my God, like I'm putting this poor person through all this stuff. Going through it, it was just kind of like, oh yeah, this is, it's uncharted waters, but I guess this is how it's supposed to be. And uh, looking back on it, it was, I guess it was how it was supposed to be, because it was tough. I definitely, um, I think I learned more about Kareem in the last couple years than I could have learned about him in, you know, a lifetime. But. So many different emotions and things. Just be supportive, and uh, the biggest thing is uh, don't let it be the elephant in the room you don't talk about. I was probably within the first week that I was diagnosed. I remember I was laying in bed and I was really upset. And I was like, I didn't at that time know what stage my cancer was. And I remember just being like, oh my gosh, like I don't know if I'm gonna be able to like do all the things I wanna do in my life. And I remember him saying like, no matter what, we'll get married one day. Like no matter what happens, we'll get married. Kareem and Janelle are looking forward to their upcoming wedding. You know what, I never actually asked you this question, but why did you ask me to marry you right after my chemo, like, why didn't you wait till maybe I looked a bit better? <laughs> to me, it felt like a pretty bright light at the end of a dark tunnel. We're closer, and I think um, little things bother both of us, like, a bit less than they did. We kind of have seen the bigger picture, and we know how hard life can be, so I don't think either of us stresses the small stuff as much as maybe we did before. One year after her mastectomy, Sylvia has reconstructive surgery. I'm not in much pain, actually, so I'm good. And then, of course, I have my dreams. I'll show you my new boobies. Ew, what kind of bra is that? It's a very sexy bra. Sexy. Um, and then see all these things here? Those were, like, I think the different implants that my surgeon came um, brought with him to the operating room because he wasn't sure which one he's gonna put in so I don't know one of those is inside me I guess. I think I view my breasts a little bit differently um, than I did before. I kind of view them more like objects rather than part of me because they've just been looked at so much and um, ripped apart. The place that I am right now I'm more comfortable with myself. I am I know myself a lot more than I did a year and a half ago. I've also learned that every cloud, and cancer was a big cloud, has a silver lining and that you can make something truly beautiful come out of something bad.
You notice any changes with your eyes? Today, Claire will find out if the tumor in her eye has grown. I just had a re-examination of my eye and unfortunately they think they see a little growth extending from the original tumor. Her eye is not the only concern. The tumors in her brain have rapidly doubled. I think I had 12 tumors a couple months ago and now I have 23 tumors. Not a good sign for the future. Uh, the only reason I'm not falling is because I've fallen for three days straight. So I have no more tears left. But yes, I'm very distraught and my family is very distraught with the latest news. How is Nathan responding now? He knew I was upset. And uh, that night before I put him to bed, he said that he doesn't want me to die. So I, uh, tried to just comfort him, but I didn't tell him it wasn't going to happen. Even with her current situation, Claire celebrates a very special day. Today is a very exciting day. We're taking Nathan to his first day of school. So I'm on cloud nine. I'm so excited. This is a, one of those goals that I wasn't sure I'd make in life, would be to walk my kid to school. So. I'm very happy to be here, and I'm just so happy to see him growing up. A lot of moms right now are all scared because their kids growing up too fast, and I just want them to grow up faster so I can see it all.